Baby, if you could, would you go back to the start? Take any fresh steps or watch it all fall apart again. As we reach the season's final furlong, there's been a growing fear around Bramall Lane that Sheffield United may have already ran their race. Stuttering form at the run-in, Blades fans have been here before. With just five league games to go, Sheffield United fans might have hoped this afternoon's match against Swindon would provide the perfect chance to cement their claims for automatic promotion. But with just one win in their last six matches, a playoff spot might now be their only chance of securing a place in next season's championship. Play another song here, then you can leave. That return wasn't deemed good enough for the United board, and after Tuesday's defeat by Crawley, they felt a change in the dugout was the only option. In the last hour, Sheffield United have confirmed that manager Danny Wilson has left the club. As Wilson's 23-month tenure came to an end, the Bramall Lane Blazers called upon a familiar face, Chris Morgan, to steer the good ship United back on course. Wise decision? Only time will tell. But was Wilson's sacking based purely on results, or were there growing tensions simmering behind the scenes? Jamie Hoyland played almost 100 games for United and left the club only last month after a short stint working at the Youth Academy. It's a massive gamble. There were a lot of trouble last, last summer with people main, being made redundant at Sheffield United and I think they've, they've started cutting the cloth really, really badly. And unfortunately, I think if Danny had wanted to, I'm sure he did want to have uh, players in, what he could have done, got told he couldn't and, and just had to get on with it. And unfortunately, he's, he's paid the consequences. Going back to the club he supported all his life, why did Jamie walk away after only six months at Shirecliffe? From the early doors, I really knew it wasn't the job for me. I, I didn't feel as if um, the, the, the club had what, what I wanted and, and we, weren't, we weren't going the right way, really. Our philosophies were a bit different. I'd had three different bosses, really, in six months and I couldn't develop a working relationship, really, where you know I wanted to be in it with the football and, and at the time we were doing loads and loads and loads of meetings rather than what I wanted to do, develop players and being on the coaching field. The club have lost some key players in the last year and Jamie believes Wilson found it difficult trying to replace them. Now every penny is watched and, and what you can have and what you can't have. You're wanting that player who you think you can have to take the club forward and really you might get somebody down, down the way that there's a list and where you can't have him, you can't have him and it might be one down there where it is. But that's, that's really a lot of clubs nowadays but I, I know definitely at Sheffield United that's what's happened. Ahead of yesterday's match, what was the feeling among United supporters about Wilson's exit? I think something had got to be done, I'm sorry to see him go, I think he's brought football ethic back to the line uh, but we just couldn't carry on with one on win at home since Boxing Day. Something had got to happen, five games to go, it's vital so it's a gamble. I think it's very sad. I think he was a very good manager. Um, I think he's been treated badly. Having said that, I really like Chris Morgan. I don't think they could have picked a better person than him. I think it's just been a travesty, to be honest with you. I think perhaps a bad decision, but you never know if it's really a good decision or a bad decision until season's over, do you? So that's the difficulty with this one. I think they'll come out really fired up. I hope everybody gets behind them today. Yeah, and yeah. I think Plenty they'll really go for today. it for Chris. I yeah, think they'll I think be so. good. Come yeah. on, Morgs, go for it. Morgan was welcomed into the dugout to huge acclaim from the home fans and his team got off to an electric start. Indeed, they could easily have been three or four up by half time. Chris Porter did find the net shortly before the break, latching on to Tony McMahon's free kick. Swindon came out fighting at the resumption but were unable to level the score and Dave Kitson made them pay eight minutes before full time with this header after another superb delivery from McMahon. It was a, a, a really tough decision and it was a, a decision that I didn't, I didn't make until I'd spoke to both Danny and Frank. They both gave me my opportunity to, you know, when I, when I retired from football, you know, to, to step onto the coaching side. So, you know, without them too, you know, I, I wouldn't have had the chance to do to, today what I'm doing. It just shows the qualities that they have as, as men, you know, that they, they both sort of said grasp it, grasp it, do it and, and do your best and, and, and be yourself, you know, be yourself and, and try and try and enjoy it. 